Jeffrey. <laughs> Whew. Oh. <laughs> ah. Woo. Thank you, Master. Hallelujah. Glory. <laughs> ah. Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm not going to ask you if you got touched, because if you didn't, too bad. <laughs> oh. Crossover. <laughs> Woo -wee. Nothing greater than crossover. Hallelujah. I was going to say something, I forgot. Shoo wee. Col Col Colossians chapter 2. <laughs> uh, sure is hot in here, isn't it? <laughs> oh. Wow. Whew. Thank you, Master. Oh. Hallelujah. <laughs> Whew. Colossians chapter 2. It's just for you. Uh, is everybody there? Everybody get touched like I did this morning? Whew. Snap. That'll snap every bit of bondage. Break that religious garbage off. You know, the word says you get refreshed in the presence of God when you are come with a humble heart and you've repented for your stupidity. Amen. Refreshing comes in his presence. You know, one of the things that the Spirit was sharing with me this morning is about the reality of being complete in Him. Allowing the regeneration of the Holy Spirit to have His way. Because there's a regeneration of the Spirit of God. You know, we as the human part of us have to sleep to be regenerated. Um... And then there's an area where your spirit is regenerated by God's presence. Your spirit cannot be regenerated by anything else but God's presence. That's why it's the regeneration of the Holy Spirit. Now, to go beyond, in other words, when we cross over, as we go beyond the veil, as we go beyond things, there are multiple realities. There's what we call the temporary and the eternal, but then there's more than that. People don't realize that there's a fake reality, an, uh, uh, an imagination reality, which is flawed. You know, kids, they have an imagination, amen? To them, it's a reality but it's not true. Hopefully. 
<laughs> you never know who they're speaking to. This is my imaginary friend, Ralphie, you know. Whatever. <laughs> Come to find out it's a demon talking to the kids. But when you and I sleep, our body needs to be regenerated. But when you sleep, you depart to multiple realities and you don't even know it. Why am I talking about this? I have no idea. <laughs> Are your dreams real to you? Anybody? Sheesh, it's not a trick question. Our dreams are real to us, aren't they? And every dream that you have, there's always some connection of something that you know or someone you know, but could be from a different reality. See, God is bigger than what you and I can imagine. We live in this reality, but we're connected to an eternal reality. He's allowed us to know about that eternal reality, which gives me a new hope to get the heck out of here. Amen? <clears throat> you know that some of our dreams we want to get out of sometimes. Some of the times there are nightmares or torment, whatever. But those are realities that are happening. Sometimes you're just seeing in another reality, even though you're not a part of it. But we've got to come out and remove all limitations. All limitations of who God is and his love. And what he can do. Not what he can't do. Because there isn't anything he can't do. And we've got to come out of that arena that God can't do something. Amen? He can do all things. But again, all things he can do. In the area to those who cooperate. It always takes cooperation. In this place, he says, you are complete in me. See, sometimes we're complete in him, sometimes we're partial complete. Sometimes we take a, a, a foot out of him, we take a step out of him, we take whatever. In other words, he wants us to be complete in him all the time, not when it's convenient. Why? Because there's so many things he wants to show us. There's so many things he wants to bring us to. So many things he wants to increase our faith and so many things he wants to impart in us. So much more. But yet the world's impressions brings limitations. The carnal old man, the flesh, the things of impression all around bring limitations. And that's where he checks the hearts out to make sure that the desires are according to him and not ourselves. Where there's an exchange of desire. Remember the heart is the core of all desires. When you are complete in him, you don't have to ask for nothing. <laughs> it's already there. Does everybody understand that? This is where he's trying to get his body. When you are complete in him, it's done. Jesus said it was finished on the cross. Amen. But then he saw those, he said, forgive them for they know, don't know what they do. Or they don't know what they listen to. You know, there are basic principles in the kingdom of God. There are basic principles in the world. And so many times people compromise those basic principles. I'm going to share one basic principle in the kingdom. Who told you that? It is a basic principle that you and I are to maintain. Monitoring your thoughts. Monitoring voices and agreements. It is a basic principle. And one of those things of the basic principle, just a simple basic principle of monitoring your thoughts can either keep you in him or begin to remove you out of him. Colossians 2 verse 1. Oh, hallelujah. Let's speak it. For I want you to know what a great conflict. Is everybody there? I have for you and those in Laodicea, and as for many as have not seen my face in the flesh, that their hearts may be encouraged, being knit together in love. Knit together in what? Love. Attaining to all riches and the fullness 
full assurance of the of understanding to the knowledge of the mystery of God, both to, of the Father and of who? Christ. In whom are hidden all the what? All the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. So see, everything is in him. So he's trying to get us to get to a place where we are complete in him. Where everything is. See, people begin to search so many other places and fulfillments because they're not complete in him. Verse 4. Now this I say, lest anyone should deceive you with persuasive words. For though I am absent in the flesh, yet I am with you in spirit, rejoicing to see your good order and the steadfastness of your faith in Christ. Good order. In other words, things that are in divine order. And you're steadfast in the anointing. Hallelujah. As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him. Rooted and built up in him. And established in the faith as you have been taught. Abounding in it with thanksgiving as you have been taught. So you got to understand that training is a process of accessing and being complete in him. We go through a process of training. Let me tell you, the training never stops. No one's ever reached the highest level yet. <laughs> but we are complete in him. So one of the things the enemy wants to do is everything. To keep you from being complete in him. He says traps, desires. He brings offenses. He does everything. The, remember the first basic principle of the enemy's course is to bring you to you. Bring you to who? You. Me. Me, myself, and I. A trinity of destruction. Verse 8. Beware lest anyone cheat you through what? Philosophy and empty deceit according to the tradition of what? Men. And according to the what? Basic principles of the world and not according to Christ. For in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And you are what? Complete in him who is the head of all principality and power. And, and power. When he talks about basic principles and traditions, see, there are emotional traditions. Amen? And the basic lifestyle and attitude of worldliness, those are basic things. Look around the world, remember where you came from. All of those ways of conduct are the basic principles of the world. Things that we agreed with and so forth. Amen? Now that, but... But it was never according in our old man. It was never according to the basic principles of the divine nature or the kingdom of Christ. Only those things can bring us to a place of complete in him or not complete in him. One or the other. When you begin to compromise those things, you begin to drift. It's like stepping out. Stepping out. Is everybody okay? Basic principle kingdoms must be renewed constantly. Again, what is the basic principle? Who told you that? <laughs> See, there should be a checklist all the time for me and you. So what we want to do is we want to take the basic principles of the kingdom of God and replace them. I mean, replace the basic principles with, of worldliness. Amen? We want to remove all worldly basic principles. Lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, pride of life. Hello? <laughs> How about rebellion? Offense, all the other stuff. The me syndrome, the I syndrome, the blame syndrome. John 15. Complete in him. Oh, happy days. you, Lord. Complete in him. Verse 15, uh, chapter 15. <laughs> Gosh. <laughs> this is tough. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, verse 15. 
verse 1. Is everybody there? Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch of me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every tree that bears fruit, he prunes that he may what? Bear more fruit. <laughs> so the pruning is for increase. Amen? <laughs> the immature mind can't comprehend that. <laughs> Why? Because the immature mind is still seeking feeling. 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 Without feeling, they're not successful. Without feeling, they're not complete. Without feeling, that's the carnal mind. It's the immature mind. Remember, the process of developing the mind of Christ is a process so that we are complete in Him. That's why people run. They don't fight. That's why they please men instead of God. Every branch of me that does not bear fruit, He takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes, that he may bear more fruit, bring increase. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me. That means become, come and get complete in me. And then I will be in, complete in you. As a branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me you can do what? Nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. And they gather them and throw them into the fire and they are burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you. You will ask what you desire and it will be done for you. Why? Because you're asking what he wants. As a father, by this my father is what? Glorified. My father is glorified that you bear much fruit so you will be my disciples. Again, the pruning is for increase. Amen. We are cleansed by his word. We abide in him. It is a place of complete in him. So many times, without understanding, people don't know that they're actually seeking freedom from themselves. <laughs> when people are struggling in all kinds of stuff, they're actually most of the time seeking freedom from themselves because self is holding them from abiding complete in Him. Does everybody get it? But these things we got to recognize, we got to understand these, we got to learn these, we got to put them to practice. Because the enemy seeks whom he can what? Devour. Amen. And he's only got a big mouth. That's why he's called the roaring lion. So in other words, his voice of impression is going to lead you or, or mislead you and deceive you. But we must know that voice. We've lived with that voice for a long time. In fact, that voice is in your flesh. So you battle with yourself every day. Every decision, no matter what you're doing. You don't have to be concerned about demons. But when you agree with the flesh, it opens up the door to demons. Amen? Complete in Him. Listen, when you're in Him, can anything touch you? No. <laughs> That's where your freedom is. That's where our freedom is. In Him. We fight to get in Him. James 1. Remember, this is an emotional battle. The enemy loves to play people with their emotions. Militaries overseas, that's how the enemy plays. They send little children that are strapped with dynamite and weapons, grenades. These soldiers go and pick these kids up because they're moved by compassion and it blows them up. The enemy works the same way. He hides behind people. Amen? James 1.21 Let's speak it. 
Therefore lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word which what cleanses us. For which is able to save your souls. Be doers of the word. Not hearers only. Deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But he who looks into the perfect law of freedom, liberty, and continues. That word continues is vital in it and is not forgetful hero but a doer of the work. This one will be blessed in what he does. If any among you thinks he's religious and does not bridle his tongue but deceives his own heart, this one's religion is useless. Pure and undefiled religion before God and the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their trouble and to keep oneself unspotted from the basic principles of the world. Amen? Doers of his words, of his rules. See, his rules, his, his word has rules and regulations. Commands or request. Freedom is only in Christ and in the Spirit. It's in Him. You know, you can be in jail and in the cell and be free. <laughs> so you can't blame your freedom or, or not being free because of circumstances. You can't, the blame game's got to come to an end. <laughs> you have the power to receive and believe. You have the power to impart, amen, and you have the power to do, to practice every single one of us. So we can't use an excuse. Well, you don't know what happened to me. We don't care. Hello. What's done is done. Move on. Move on. See, it's when people don't move on, they still hang out in that puddle of dirt. We call the puddle of affliction. They refuse to move on because they want self-pity. They want to be recognized. Woe is me. Well, what about me? Jesus never said, what about me? Amen? Oh, happy days. Not a doer, you're not abiding. You're not complete in him. Then you're all outside or partially outside in the instead of being complete in him. That's where people fall on self-reliance. Self-reliance. Well, I can do that. No, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen? This is where individuals begin to no longer be accountable in Him. Accountability is essential. We are accountable to one, one another. Amen? But there's a respect to one another. Heck, we should be fighting for one another, not fighting against one another. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Verse 1. Complete in Him. Verse 1, you therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus and the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses. Commit these to faithful, that means mature, men and women who will be able to teach others. Why? Because you can't give what you don't have. And if you had it and you lost it, you can't give it. Does everybody get it? See, people are still trying to give it when they've lost it and they haven't earned the trust again. You therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. And if anyone competes in athletics, he's not crowned unless he com competes according to the what? Rules. So there are rules of engagement. There's rules of engagement. If you're not backed by the anointing, see, one of the things that disqualify us is sin. Rebellion. Unforgiveness, hardened hearts, offense. All of these things will disqualify from an act of war, act of engagement. Verse 6, the hardworking 
farmer must be first to partake of the crops. Consider what I say. May the Lord give you understanding in all things. Remember that Jesus Christ, the seed of David, was raised from the dead according to my gospel, for which I suffer trouble as an evildoer, even to the point of change. But the word of God is not chained. Therefore I endure all things for the sake of the elect, that they also may obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. Verse 11. This is a faithful saying. If we died with him, we shall also live with him. If we endure, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful. He cannot deny himself. Now you got to Again, when, you, when we get to that point where there's more sensitivity and more detail, one of the things that the Holy Spirit is going to reveal to us is how do we deny him? Doubt denies him. Fear denies him. Rebellion denies him. That means that an individual is not complete in him. Because when an individual is complete in him, there is no denying. Does everybody understand? None. Hallelujah. Disobedience denies him. This is where people have a futile engagement. Somebody understand it. It's, 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 it's not working. In warfare, there's an engagement of warfare that must be backed by the blood of Christ and the anointing of Christ. And if there's any spot at all, offense, bitterness, rebellion, disobedience, any of those things will nullify a full engagement. That's why people go around in cycles. Because they can't break free. Because they're still trying to fight with something they're not free from. Amen? And they still have an open door to sin to whatever it is touching on. Here's another basic principle. You want another basic principle of the kingdom of God? 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Let's grow there. Hallelujah! Basic principles. What? Well, so you can be complete in him and full engagement in warfare. Verse 16, let's all speak it. And what accord, oh, and what agreement? Is anybody there yet? Man, don't go silent on me now. And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God, as God has said. And I will dwell in them, I will walk among them, and I'll be their God, and they shall be my people. Therefore, if they do what? Here's a basic principle. Come out from among the world. It's affections. It's entanglements. It's influences. And be separate, says the Lord. In other words, God's trying to expose the idols in the hearts of man, of his people. Do not touch what is unclean. See, what is unclean to me and you is different than what's unclean to the world. Disobedience to the world is not unclean. For me and you, it's unclean. Rebellion is unclean. Amen? Self is unclean. <laughs> Selfishness is unclean. Self-righteousness is unclean. All of these things, there are things that are unclean for me and you that is not unclean to the world. Because the world is completely unclean anyways. Amen? He says, don't touch or agree with what is unclean. How about the voice of a stranger? And then I will receive you. And I'll be a father to you. And you'll be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. That's a basic principle of the kingdom of God. And so many people are not abiding in that. And when they're not abiding in that, it's because they're not complete in Him. Remember, there's a process of things that we must abide in to be complete in Him. Rules of engagement. Flesh <laughs> nullifies it. Hello. <laughs> Selfishness, sin, rebellion, unforgiveness, disobedience, and so forth. 
not a full power of engagement. And the enemy knows it. Isaiah 59. Is everybody okay? Training for reigning. Officers training school. Glory. You know, while we were praising and worshiping today, man, I saw people take off. The only thing that was left were their shoes. They were like rockets. Pew. I couldn't tell who. It was just pew, pew, pew. <laughs> Praise God. Whew. Verse 1. First three verses. Let's speak it. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, nor is ear heavy that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated you from your God. And your sins have hidden his face from you so that he will not hear. Wow. For your hands are defiled with blood. Now, when he speaks about hands defiled in blood, it means what you've agreed with. It's unclean. Does everybody get it? Unclean. It doesn't mean that you have to shed blood. Amen. It's what you agree with, which is unclean. And your fingers with iniquity, your lips have spoken lies, and your tongue has muttered perversity. Wow. Disobedience against anything that God has established will bring blood on your hands. Does everybody understand that? That's why he says rebellion is of what? Witchcraft. It's blood on our hands. You know, even in the and when Elijah was training up one of his guys, and he said, look at, go out. And there was a dude that came by and wanted to bless Elijah with goods. And Elijah said, no, I don't, want, I don't need it. And his servant followed that man. And when he got to him, he said, look at, I'll, I'll take the goods. And the man offered, said, sure, no problem, because he was gr grateful. He got healed. And when he came back to Elijah, Elijah said, why have you lied to me? That dude didn't live any longer. That, see, that was disobedience to God's authority. So many times in the kingdom right now, there's so much disobedience. And rebellion to the offices, to the kingdom, to the divine order that he has established. People take it nonchalantly thinking that's okay. Nobody gets away with it. I'm going to tell you right now. Nobody. You will, you will, every one of us will reap everything that comes against the kingdom. No matter what. Hallelujah. Your, the engagement will be nullified. Disobedience against governing rulings of engagement of the kingdom spiritually, physically will cause separation of favor, protection, and refreshing. Prosperity and revelation. Those things will be delayed. Romans 13. Romans 13. You know, things are put in order not to rule over, but to put into rules. <laughs> Romans 13. Guidelines. And verse 1. Complete in him. You know, Jesus submitted to everything. Except for the religious stuff where he was healing on the Sabbath. That really blew them away. Because he is the Lord of the Sabbath. Because <laughs> they couldn't understand that. 
but he submitted to all of the rules, all the regulations, all city ordinances when he had his carpentry business. He was licensed to do everything. <laughs> Hallelujah. I don't know if you had to have a license to drive a chariot or not, but anyways. Romans 13, verse 1. Let every soul be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God. And the authorities that exist are appointed by God. Therefore, whoever resists the authority resists the ordinance of God. And those who resist will bring judgment on themselves. So again, rules are made for in the kingdom. See, we want to be complete in him and we want to do what he did. So now, we may break the law accidentally or on purpose, whatever. But there's always a... <laughs> There's always an area where we reap what we sow. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. I've taken that driving course more than you can imagine. I could be an instructor. Hallelujah. But in this, in the kingdom, there's a physical, in other words, there's gravity rule. Amen. <laughs> what goes up must come down. So you're not going to jump off a tree or a building and challenge God. Lord, if your word says the angel will bear me up in their hands, you're going to hit the ground and flatten out. Hello. Now you're challenging God. See, people challenge God when they disobey his rules. They disobey his authority. They disobey his office. They disobey his house. It's his house, not ours. Amen. Glory. Let's go a little further. Now we don't need to go further. Resist governing rule physically with taxes, registrations, traffic, laws, even corporate laws. Amen? How about marriages? Marriages the same way. Listen, if you've got a check and it's written, somebody writes you a check, God ain't going to cash it. You must abide by the rule that he set up. Bring it to God. A bank or a place where you can care. See, once it's registered, it's manifested. See, there's all kinds of marriages out there. They call them, I don't know, common law and whatever. Well, we've been together long enough, we should be married. People have even gotten licensed to be married and never registered it. You know what? They're not married. Because nothing is activated until it's registered. Does everybody get it? Why? Because that's under the law of this land, which God has put in order. See, but there's people that compromise all of these things and they wonder why they can't advance. They wonder why things are happening to them. Because they're not submitting to the rule of God. Submitting to the rule of God allows us, me and you, to be complete in Him. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. It even tells us, render therefore taxes where taxes are due. Believe me, I hate paying taxes. Do I think it's wrong? Yes. But do I pay them? Yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Second Corinthians 5. And my wife pays them really. <laughs> and we have a lot of them. Second Corinthians 5. Heck, when we were in the world, we'd take a loan out and didn't care if we paid it back. Ah, eh, so what? Unless you tried to get something else, then you couldn't go further. Let me tell you, then it catches up with you. Especially after you get saved. <laughs> oh, snap. <laughs> Thank God for using the law of the land. It's called bankruptcy. <laughs> Hallelujah. But you got the religious spirits. You can't do that. I'll never forget. The Lord said, use the law of the land. I put it in there. I said, thank you, master. <laughs> I'm free. <laughs> I'm free from debt. Praise God. <laughs> you know, so there's so many things we're carrying over from our old life into the new one. And God wants to free us. But he doesn't want to go back into those same things again. That's where we fall out of being complete with him. Amen. 
And verse 9. 2 Corinthians 5, 9. Therefore, we make it our aim, whether present or absent, to be well-pleasing to him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive the things done in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad. Knowing, therefore, the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, but we are well-known to God, and I also trust as well-known in your consciences. For we do not commend ourselves again to you, but give you opportunity to boast on our behalf, that you may have an answer for those who boast in appearance, but what? Not in heart. For if we are beside ourselves, it is for God. For if we are of sound mind, it is for you. For the love of Christ compels us because we judge us that if one died for all, then all died. And he died for all, that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again. Therefore, from now on, we don't recognize anyone according to the what? Flesh. Even though we've known Christ according to the flesh, yet we know him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, it see, when he's speaking about this now, he's saying, if anyone is complete in him, you know, because people are quoting the scripture. I'm a new creation in Christ. Don't, old things have passed away. Well, why hasn't it? Because you ain't complete. There's still something in your life that you're still holding on to that has in let you lo loose to be complete in him. Or other than that, then all things are become new. Old things have passed away. Things are becoming new. There's an exchange made constantly. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Again, many, many have boast in, in appearance, but not in the heart. They're not complete. There's always that process of conversion. There's growing. You and I will be challenged to grow. That's what the challenges come for, to grow. Amen? And Mark 4. Mark chapter 4, verse 10. Now when Jesus was alone, those around him with the twelve asked him about the parable. And he said to them, do you not, do, to you it has been given to you the mystery of the kingdom of God. In other words, basic principles. But to those who are outside, all things come in parables. So that seeing they may see and not perceive. So Now listen to this. Because he's saying to them, they are outside. Seeing, they don't perceive. So when a person falls in this state of being, it's because they're falling outside of being complete. Does everybody get that? Why can't they see what they, we see then? Because they're outside of him. Why can a person who's a believer, spirit-filled and everything, see one day and then the next day they can't see what they're supposed to be seeing? Because they've fallen out of him. They're incomplete. Seeing that they may see and not perceive, hearing that they may hear and not understand, lest they should turn and their sins be forgiven them. Then he said to them, do you not understand this parable? How then will you understand all the parables? The sower sows the word. And these are the ones by the wayside where the word is sown. When they hear, Satan comes. You know, this ought to be a, 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 it's a, a basic principle. When you leave here today, Satan will come. A demon will come to try and steal what you've gotten today. He will try to compromise you. He'll try to bring it out of your memory. He says he comes and steals it out of the heart. So that you will rely on your feeling again. You will rely on your carnality. And it will move you from being complete in him. Or delay being complete in him. Does everybody got it? Satan comes immediately and takes away the word that is sown in their hearts. Verse 16. These likewise are the ones sown on stony ground who when they hear the word immediately receive with gladness. And they have no root in themselves, and so endure only for a time. Afterward, when tribulation or challenges or persecution come or rises 
For the word's sake, immediately they what? Stumble. See, the devil will also come to challenge the word in you. And he wants to nullify it. So when you're not standing on it and putting it into practice and doing it, it becomes nullified. Listen, nothing is activated without using it. Verse 18. Now these are the ones sown among thorns. They are the ones who hear the word and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of the love of money and the desires for other things entering choke the word. In other words, it cannot produce. And it becomes what? Unfruitful or nullified. But these are the ones sown on good ground. Those who hear the word, accept it. If you accept it, do you put it to practice? Yes. And bear fruit, some 30, 60, and some 100 fold. The process of conversion until complete. This is what he was talking about. There's a process. Amen. Many can fall back repeating the process, not willing to follow the original guidelines to the process. And there are guidelines to the process. And Galatians 4. Galatians chapter 4. You know, there are things that people don't realize that they, they touch and agree with. And they're holding on, not even knowing it. You know, I remember one day I went into a store. And there was, a, I don't know what kind of store. They had all kinds of stuff. Prayer books, all kinds of things. But then there were some cursed items in there. I was a baby in Christ. I didn't know about it. And I went and picked something up. And all of a sudden I heard the voice of the Lord say, drop it. Drop it. And he said, come outside. And I went outside the building. He said, now lift your hands and get washed by the blood. And I did. I said, what was it? He said, an accursed item, guy. I don't want you touching none of that. Why? Because it will separate me from you. See, one day, because I was, I was only a few, a few weeks old in the Lord, no witch came by because they've been after me. And she had a Bible and everything. And my car broke down on the side of the road. You probably heard this testimony multiple times in some of the teachings. And so I helped her out. Well, she came to my house. She called her husband and so forth. Make a long story short, she had a bracelet. She said, look, wear, wear, wear this bracelet. It'll let me know. I'm going to help you. I said, oh, how stupid am I? The moment I put that bracelet on, I could no longer see the face of God. I saw a shadow. It was like his back was turned towards me. And I kept going, what's the matter, Lord? What's the matter? I went to a morning prayer group, and this bracelet had turquoise in it. I'm standing there praying with everyone. Turquoise are falling out. I'm picking them up, putting them in my pocket, you know, going, what's the matter with this bracelet? All of a sudden, <laughs> and I went home, and I'm crying. Lord, what's the problem? Lord, what's and then one day, she, I mean, things just began to manifest. She, she knew everything about me. It was an accursed item attaching it to me so she knew what I was doing. Finally, I kept, in the Bible, when I'm opening them to go, where do I go? What do I do? In the Bible, the, word, the page turned by itself and told me about a woman with the silver and so forth. I'm thinking, huh? And I looked at this thing. I thought, what the heck? I pulled it off, and it had an S on it. I didn't realize about it before. I don't know if I meant stupid or Satan, you know. And I took it, and I threw it away. And immediately after that, I saw the, it was like the Lord turned from his back, no more a shadow, and turned around to me. And I realized, now, again, I was only a few weeks old. And God trained me up in that immediately about accursed items. See, people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. It moved me away from him. I wasn't completing him anymore. I was devastated. Devastated. Like it, nothing's changed. The powers of darkness still do the same stupid things. And so do we. But now we're gaining knowledge. We're learning and putting it into practice. 
You know, it's amazing how many Christian homes I've gone to and they got booze in their house and so forth. They have no idea. You know why? They're not completing him. Still smoking cigarettes and still doing this and not realizing these things are unclean. Because they're not complete. Because when there's a completeness, there's an area of detail and purity, cleanness, humbleness, surrender, and giving God all the glory no matter what we do. Amen? Oh, yes. Where are we going? Galatians 4? Are we there? Did we do that yet? No? We did? Oh, we ain't done it. Okay, let's do it. Just do it. Verse 1. Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, does not differ from all from, from a slave, though he is master of all. But is under what? Guardians and stewards until the time appointed by the Father. A time appointed by the Father. Listen. God never released me until I was sent. In fact, even when the ministry moved out of the state and they had a regathering, the Lord sent me back there. And when I went back there, I got sent from that point. And it was a breakfast. Just whatever. Just didn't. You know, believe me, I cried out to God for a mentor. Lord, send me a mentor. He said, I did. He said, I sent you the Holy Spirit. He's your mentor. And one day, a, a, a person was trying to prophesy over me and whatever and said, man, if you don't get a mentor, you're never going to fulfill God's will. I broke that off immediately. I said, see, Lord, a word came from you supposedly that I need a mentor. He said, break that off, guy. He said, I'm your mentor. I'm your mentor. Now, don't get me wrong. I was still accountable to man. Does everybody understand that? I was, he brought me to a place. I want a right-hand man in this ministry to me was a mentor to me. But he used to tell me, anybody got anything to say about you? Have them come to me. Because he knew I was crazy. I was in love with Jesus. I didn't care. Nothing held me back, man. He used to have to take me down. <laughs> I brought a boombox of one of the morning prayers one time. <laughs> and I had this music jamming. And he come walking in because he was the head minister there. And he was about to re me out. And he got in. The next thing he knew, the princess got hit him. Boom! And he says, and then afterwards, he says, you know, I was coming after you. <laughs> he said, but that music brought me right into the presence of God. I said, here, take the CD. <laughs> but man, when you're in love with Jesus, nothing matters. There ain't no fear. <laughs> That's where he wants us, me and you, to be. This complete in him, but submissive to all things. Believe me, I wanted to pray for people and everything. I've even heard... The Lord told me one day, go pray for that person in that meeting. And you know what? He tested me. So I went to the pastor and I said, would you mind if I prayed for that person? He said, yes, do not pray for her. I said, okay. I went back, sat down, stayed in the service or whatever. It was almost like the Lord accepted that. He said, that's where I want you to be. Never go do anything in another place of my house and go above the authority I've given there. Never. You go to that authority and you ask. Never do that. You want to not offend me? Then never do that. That's my house, not yours. And I did that from now on. So what happened? That person then would come to our house one day and the Lord said, now you can pray for her. And that's when she had about 33 demons. Something like that. But anyways, again, this is where we've got to allow God. So we're under guardians and stewards until the time pointed by the Father to go. So listen, when we break covenant with God, he puts us back under guardians again. Why? To be accountable. We're accountable. 
when we stop being accountable, and we begin to step out. And we become self. I don't need to be accountable no more. I'm all right. No, you're full of pride. And eventually the enemy's going to come steal, kill, and destroy something. You are only progress that puts limitations. Does everybody understand? Remember, God's trying to get us to this place where we are complete in him and receiving everything that he has for us. And stop the enemy from stealing. Verse 3, even so when we were children, we're in bondage under the what? Elements of the world. But when the fullness of the time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive the adoption as sons. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father, which is Daddy. Again, we are placed in the kingdom under guardian stewards and offices of his righteous up, righteousness, upholding to the lead of his spirit to be discipled, to be trained, and to be weaponized. Amen? And connected in the spirit until complete in him, then we are released with accountability, not the self-will of false freedom, but the will of God. Amen? Where we are now no longer subjected in the area of the influence of the elements of the world, but we're more submissive to the basic elements of God. And Psalm 18. And then one more scripture. Hallelujah. In verse 20. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. The Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness and according to the cleanness of my hands. He has recompensed me. For I have kept the ways of the Lord. That means you've submitted to his divine order. I have not wickedly departed from God. For all his judgments were before me. And I did not put away his statutes from me. I was also blameless before him, and I kept myself from iniquity. Therefore, the Lord has recompensed me according to my righteousness and according to the cleanness of my hands in his sight. In other words, he was rewarded. We are rewarded by God in response to our obedience, our submission, our accountability, our integrity, and surrendered in trust to him. What happens is people get a false self-entitlement. That is influenced by the enemy. I'm okay now. Heck, I've done nine months. I'm good. I've completed a year. I've done this. I've been clean for 25 years now. I can do whatever I want. That's not how it is. God will always keep me and you accountable. Always. It never stops. We are accountable no matter what to one another. This is a house of God that he has put together. You should be fighting for this house. This is your family. This is one part of a storehouse of God, a resource of God. It's not a man's house. It's not a pastor's house. It's a house of God. He provides everything. We come to get fed by his spirit. We come to get filled with his spirit. We come to go back out and, and battle. We come to get weaponized, anointed, and empowered so that we can overcome everything. That's why we come here. But it's his house, not our house. And we should fight for the house of God. We should fight for each and every one in and associated with this house. But you must be connected with the house. If you're not connected with the house, how are you going to get fought for? Amen? We are to be examples and witnesses to one another. Encouraging one another. Be consistent. You know, you're not going to believe someone that's not consistent. Amen? Amen? This is where he said, denying yourself. Trust God that he knows everything that you need. Be complete in him and he's going to make it. I used, to, I used to prevent many times, Lord, I'm not going to pray for nothing. I'm going to intercede for everyone else. I don't need nothing. Whatever you want to give me, give me. There are times when I've slipped. 
you know, Lord, I could really use. And be like, guy, you don't trust me? You don't trust that I know what you need? The only thing I want you to ask for me is to dress you every day. I want you to ask me to dress you every day with my wisdom and armor and everything pertaining to warfare for me. And I'll take care of the rest. Now, it doesn't mean I don't ask for wisdom in certain things that need to be done. Lord, I need your wisdom on this. I don't understand this. Okay. But as for me personally, I don't need anything. As for you personally, you don't need anything. He, he has it all. Stop asking and you start receiving. What does he say? You don't get it because you ask it on your own pleasures. You ask it for all the things you want to entertain and keep yourself busy in fulfillment when I'm your fulfillment. Complete in Him. Complete in Him. Complete in Him. Hallelujah. Is everybody okay? Don't reward yourself. Oh, I think I deserve this today. No, you don't. <laughs> Psalm 133. You know, so many times we steal God's blessing. And how do we steal God's blessing? Because he's trying to bless us from, with something and we steal it by getting it before he gives it to us. Does everybody understand that? You'd be praying, Lord, you know I need a car. Thank you for the car. Okay, so when it comes, it comes. Then people go out and buy a car, and it wasn't from God. So they stole God's blessing to them. Now they're accountable for the maintain that thing. Somebody get it? People purchasing things when God is trying to bless you. He's trying to keep himself in an area where he's always revealed himself to you. And I get things brought across my path. I'm like, whoa, I asked for that 15 years ago. Whoa, you didn't forget. <laughs> Man, he loves to surprise us. If you let him, stop blessing yourself. Let him bless you. Amen? Don't get me wrong. There's things that he's going to tell you you need to buy and whatever. But there are things that he just wants to bless you with. Surprise you with. You don't know. Heck, you may get a wife in the mail. UPS. Hallelujah. <laughs> you may get a husband in a parachute. I just come out of the sky. Never limit him. Amen. Where did I say to go? Psalm 133? Oh, hallelujah. He's got it all, man. That doesn't mean go to dating things on, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you don't have to hunt. Hello? God brings it. And when he brings it, it's much better. Boy, is it much better. Psalm 133, verse 1, let's speak it. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in what? Unity. It is like precious oil upon the head. That means anointing. Listen, we want this place to be anointed strong. Today was a wonderful presence of God and anointing. You should be strengthened and refreshed for a good week. Thank God we're coming back Tuesday. Hallelujah. <laughs> it is like the precious oil upon the head running down on the beard of Aaron, running down on the edge of his garments. It is like the dew of Hermon descending upon the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord commanded the what? Blessing. Life forevermore from his presence. Complete in him. Lord, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. 
as you continue to guide us and protect us and show us and lead us and teach us and kill us so we can be more like you. We want to be complete in you, Lord. Thank you, way. Thank you for removing all lukewarmness from us and bringing a desire of fire for your glory, for your honor, for your praise in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Hallelujah. You may prepare your heart for communion and bring your tithes or offerings.